So, hello, it's Jan, it's me again. Um, this time I will talk briefly about best collaboration practices, uh, the effort that we're trying to skill in, uh, in uh, different continents among the operators uh, to come and document uh, the best collaboration practices that they are using to run their networks, implement new stuff, and things like this. So, uh, I'll be quick. So, what is a BCOP? Best operational practice, it's actually a living document that describes the best operational practices that are currently agreed on by the subject matter experts. Um, and they are actually vetted and periodically reviewed by the network, uh, global network engineering community. That's your people. Um, why are we trying to do that? What is actually the problem? Uh, the operational knowledge tends to be tribal, so you can you can go to meetings, you can talk to different people. Um, the knowledge is shared uh, during the presentations, uh, at the hallways, uh, things like this. But there is no um, uh, one repository that is actually a vetted one when you could find documents that are describing how to implement new new protocols, how, how to implement RPG6, how to implement uh, DNS set, gaming, things, and things like this. Um, so, the question is, how do I find up-to-date relevant operational information when I need it? Uh, currently, we, we don't have a repository like, like this, and we are trying to uh, bring operators together to create one. So, we came up with some sort of proposal uh, to the operational community. Um, includes the operators uh, that would talk to each other and, and document uh, these best operational practices. Um, of course, everyone is welcome to participate. And um, actually, there, there are things going on. This, this process is slow because it's, it's a bottom-up process uh, based on, on, on the voluntary work uh, from people. But around the world, we, we try to, to talk to different communities and uh, first, first uh, results are already showing. But we understand that this, this needs to be community-led process. And this can, this can be a lengthy process. So what's going on around the world in Africa region? Um, a BCOP group was started under, uh, under ETHNOC primarily, and it's led by Fiona Songa and Daniel Sognando. Um, in Asia, uh, there things are moving a bit slower. There is a BCOP task force started at GENOC and also at NZNOC, that's New Zealand. In Europe, we have RIPE BCOP task force, that is quite active. It's uh, co chaired by Ben Oberheinder and uh, myself. Um, in Latin America, I'm, I'm flying to Bogota, to Colombia at the end of September uh, to see what's going on there. Um, there is a big task force that is uh, led by Luis Valvinot and uh, Pedro Torres. Now uh, Pedro Torres will be replaced by some other guy that stepped in to lead this effort. And in North America, this one is the oldest one and the most fruitful one is the NANOC BCOP committee was established and also uh, I, I heard that they have some uh, organizational issues but they, I think they, they continue with their work. Uh, they're led, it's led by Aaron Hughes and Chris Vandenham. So what's going on in FNOC BCOP? Uh, FBCOP uh, is basically bootstrapping um, and they, they proposed the AFBCOP uh, on 7th December this year in Nairobi. Uh, Fiona proposed the, that uh, she would put together like two or three days, two days maybe, workshop with, with uh, the sole intention of bringing operators together and start documenting uh, their best current operational practice. Uh, hopefully it will happen. Um, then there was the idea about putting together the IPv6 questions answer cheat sheet specific to Africa because lots of, lots of people apparently in your continent ask the same questions about IPv6 
So one, you know, cheat sheet with answers uh, would be quite nice to have. So you 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 don't have to answer the same uh, questions all over and over again. Okay, what's going on in right region? Um, we have uh, we published the first right descent operational practice document. Uh, it was co-authored by um, lots of good people from around the world, from the operators, including Comcast, uh, Time Warner Cable, uh, and uh, also other other people. I was the co-author or the primary engine for this document. It's called IPv6 Troubleshooting for Residential Help Desks. So if you are deploying IPv6 in your network and have no idea how to make your help desk understand how to troubleshoot IPv6 when, when a user calls and usually says, oh, internet is not working, um, then uh, you can you can go and, and, and read this document. It's basically a template that you print out, put in specifics, and hand it over to your help desk. Uh, so they learn how to actually troubleshoot IPv6 issues when uh, the user calls in. And we, if you're interested in that, find me around. I'll, I'll be here for a week. Uh, we, we, we can talk about it. Uh, next one is DNSSEC operation practices for authoritative name servers. Uh, it's about it's for from uh, Matthias Mekink, one of the uh, one of the authors and developers for OpenDNSSEC. It's a good document. Then we have BGP best operational practices. Um, this is people from, from France, lots of operators involved. It's also a good document in the works. Then uh, EuroIX proposed their uh, pickup on uh, IXP stuff. Uh, this is basically a done document, and the idea is to verify it in the pickup community. Uh, then we have some more, um, uh, how to say, uh, not not very mainstream ones. Uh, this one is from Image. Uh, it's about controlled IPv6 deaggregation by large organizations. This one is also interesting to read. Um, and we have some new ideas. Um, we now started working on IPv6 deployment for small and medium ISPs. Uh, currently, the co-authors are Sander, Stefan, and myself. And uh, we, we are also looking for more uh, participants and co-authors uh, to make it work. Well, we have some ideas and some, some stuff done. Then we have uh, ideas for IP resources transfers and about network complexity and correlation to troubleshooting. And this also started lots of, lots of um, discussion on how complex the networks should be before they are too complex or how complex is enough. Um, Lacknog Vicop is bootstrapping. Um, they're currently working on their development process document um, for quite a long time now. But they said we will not produce uh, any content until we figure out what our process is. In Nano Vicop, we have we have lots of stuff. Um, I see I, I have just two minutes left, so I will just quickly go through them. One of them is public peering exchange participants. We have eBGP configuration documents, uh, Ethernet OAM, uh, anti DDoS. Uh, we have BCP38. How to how to implement it in in, in operational network? Uh, IPv6 peering. Um, and uh, as you can probably see, there are some overlaps between NANO and RIPE and other regions. So we are now we are now playing with the idea of the pick of global coordination. So uh, people from the region would talk to each other and, and try to figure out the overlaps and uh, where people should start working together, not based just on a regional level, but on, on a global level. In, ja in Japan, uh, there is Jeno Biko Group, uh, and it's uh, Jeff Francisco Kawamura and Matsuzaku Shinobu. And, um, and here we came to the potential topics for additional VCOPs. Um, if you, if it happens that you, you are from, you are you are a good expert on on, on one of the topics, uh, 
volunteer to, to the FB Cop and start start putting together a document uh, presented at the FB Cop meeting. Usually they are at uh, at ethnic or ethnic meetings and uh, ask other other people to contribute because if you present at that meeting, usually that means not just that you are you are you are, you are just saying oh, I I implemented this so I want to show off and, and go back home. That means I implemented this. I have enough experience with this, and I'm looking for, for co-authors in the audience that will help me um, uh, work on this. Uh, what are next steps? Uh, we will continue to, to bootstrap new efforts as needed at the various knocks, try to try to implant the idea of people coming together and documenting good practices. Uh, we will develop new pickup documents, uh, review and update existing documents, and as I said, starting and talking about the global coordination. Um, get involved today, find your nearest pickup effort, and uh, be active. And with that, <coughs> are there any questions or suggestions? Oh, this may be a naive question. I'm just wondering why the uh, sort of Wikipedia approach uh, well, it didn't get mentioned or tried. But it tends to be a way of extracting the, the wisdom of the crowd. Isn't it? The Wikipedia way of doing things was mentioned and thought about in the various groups. Um, and it would actually be quite a good approach for. for for several reasons, uh, because the Bicop documents should be, they're, they're live documents, they, they change all the time, and they change when the best kind of version of practice change, right? Um, but the Bicop groups, currently they did not decide to go for the Wikipedia approach, because they need to first start producing more content, and then when, that's what, what, what I, uh, feel and think, uh, and when they hit, when they hit the wall, that uh, the, the 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 exchanging the PDFs and, and doc files and text files will hit the barrier. Probably they will, they 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 might think of uh, some different approach. Uh, I saw Nishao jumping up and down. I I wasn't jumping. <laughs> Um, hi, my name is Nishal Govinda. I'm a member of the internet community. <laughs> um, so, I, I'm not an operator, um, at least not anymore. I haven't run a network of any scale or size uh, in ooh, six years, perhaps. Um, but when I was a network operator, I was an incredibly lazy network operator. Uh, as I was also. I think that good network operators eventually end up being lazy people, uh, or these people make for good operators. No choice. Um, this seems like a lot of work. <laughs> I mean, I with my lazy hat on now, I'm looking at it and it looks like, oh my god, it's working. <laughs> uh, and there's an incredible amount of work involved because you're trying to do this across different regions, and I don't know, do I align myself with the Americans because I can see some interest in topics there. Um, why all of these all over the place? It, it, it just seems inefficient to a lazy person like myself. Um, the second part of the question. <laughs> you spoke about the African, uh, I'm sorry, I forget the term, the African Beacock group. Um, and there's a meeting coming up, which is awesome for those people that want to become part of the gentleman's traveling club. But <laughs> again, it seems also incredibly inefficient mm -hmm. and expensive to me. So why why do these things at meetings? Is it not you know convenient to do them in mailing lists? Um, um, and and what has been happening? Because as far as I understand, and, and I apologize if you're the wrong person to ask this to, uh, but as far as I understand, the the COP thing started in 2013, perhaps. Um, and 
and what's happening since then? What's been happening since then? Because I didn't see a list of topics. Or maybe I missed that one. Well, probably you should you should ask Douglas and, 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 and Fiona lately about this. What what happened in their group? As I said, uh, I'm not I'm not leading this this week of efforts around the world. We just try to help um, um, start them. But to your to your original question, why doing this? So, you know, I also spent my 20 years in operations, and I was incredibly lazy operator. I, 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 I tried to simplify everything possible, and even though I tried to simplify everything <laughs> possible, I never had time to, to do any possible additional work, let go the documentation. But times are changing, and to be, to be very blunt and honest, we see more and more governments coming in and trying to understand how internet works and how they could actually um, take some sort of control or, or influence in the ways that networks are being run um, or built or new technologies implemented. So currently we don't have documented the best operational practices how these networks are run and how new technologies are deployed. And if we don't do this, some other people will go and write. Um, yeah, you want to say something? Uh, uh, again, I'm not a network operator, so things may, might have changed since my time, but I thought there were things like BCP38. <coughs> It's not just about BCP38. Isn't that an operational technology? Maybe I got the term wrong. Yes and no. So the point is that if, if we don't document the best current operational practices coming from the operators, somebody else will. And when governments will try to influence how networks are built, then we will be able to point them to the repository that describes how what are the best practices. I don't want to think about the day when the governments will figure out and document the best practices that they want to be seen uh, and used for building the networks. I I just don't want to think about it. Oh, so it's still me. But what's wrong with that? <laughs> no, no, hold on a second. This is an open internet, right? Uh, we should all feel free to document. You, you can document the VCOP, that's fine. It doesn't mean that I have to do or follow what's in there because what's in there hopefully makes sense and hopefully it's done by smart other operations people. But what's wrong if a government decides that they want to become part of the VCOP process? Or did I miss the, what you were saying? No, and that's that's perfectly fine. Uh, we have we have upcoming uh, presentation from German government at uh, at the next week of right uh, task force, uh, and that's that's not a problem. Um, I don't want to think about governments defining the best ground operation practices, how to build networks just by themselves without operators. That's that's what I'm aiming at. Yeah, Michelle, uh, Graham. Graham. Yes, sorry, I'm Graham <coughs> from the internet. <laughs> um, Michelle partially stole my question, and, and I was going to ask about BCP38 as an example. We, we, most of us in this room, I think, are aware of BCP38 as as a as one of these operational practices that we use and we talk about and we discuss and should be implemented. But it's not being implemented widely on networks in Africa or networks anywhere else. It would be well to document these things and say it's the best practice, but if we're not going to get to the point of them actually being operational practices, have we actually solved the problem? Well, we're not talking about BCP38 yet, right? First of all, usually what I get is, the usual question I get was the difference between BCP and BCLP. Uh, BCP is the ITF series. It's it's sort of like a wish from people who 
um, developer protocol standard, how it should be deployed. The best time operational practices has the operations in it. That's a completely different thing. That's how. That's just the documentation of the current state how operators are implementing stuff and building their networks. And here we are talking about best best time operational practices can be anything from BCP 38 uh, down to the to the air, air air conditioning in a data center or how to build like, the electricity. It's about the operations of the internet provider. Hi, uh, my name is Pisa. Uh, I'm asking, uh, what is uh, BCOPS do uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, in, in collaboration with maybe IPv6 and making sure the security is stable, or what does it do? I'm not sure I understand the question. Like. Uh, uh, what, what is uh, BCOPS all about? Because uh, you're talking about task force, documentation, uh, I'm lost in that. Okay, BCOP is all about operators coming together in a community and document the current operational practices, how they are building the networks. For example, if you ask yourself a question, how to implement IPv6 in an enterprise environment? If you try to 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 uh, search this on Google, you will find a zillion of, of answers, different answers. So you're not sure which one to follow. If we if we can make people talk to each other and agree, the the operators that are coming from the real world of operations, on like a generic document that that describes you how to implement IPv6 in in, in enterprise environment or how to implement IPv6 at at a medium size of ISP based on the on different models that, that people are using, this can can become a, so, a sort of trusted repository where people would go and also governments to understand how to build new things. This is actually help from from the old operators also towards the, the, the newcomers and also other people that can also improve their networks that are currently running. So it's about documenting the current situation instead. It's not about the new work or, or IT at work or something like this. Yeah. Andre, which is the not a network operator. But uh, I'd like to pull up on the BCP38 because I think that that's a great example. Because if you read BCP38, uh, you, you see it has very little content. It's actually very hard to implement BCP38. I think if we had a uh, good operational practice how to prevent anti-spoofing, not just by saying, hey, go and do ingress filtering, but actually looking at different deployment scenarios, how do you do this in a data center environment, VPS environment, in broadband environment, in transit, whatever, I think that will lower the threshold, because the, the benefit of doing BCP38 for you is very low. Right? So, lowering the threshold, lowering the cost of implementing those measures can actually help. When we were doing the maps document, we are looking at good references, where we can refer people to, to say, hey, if you want to implement Action 1, go and read this document. And you know what we discovered? There are very little well-written document that will concisely and very instructively, uh, with low cost, allow operators to implement those measures. So, I think there is I feel there is a lot of merit in those things that a lot of work, of course, right? But I think if you're on the consumption part, <laughs> I think that, that that is that is contributing to you as a lazy operator to actually lower the threshold and implement the stuff. I think we are running low on the gas. So with that, thank you very much.